Hello everyone, welcome back to Simply Learn's YouTube channel. Today, we are diving into machine learning, the technology behind things like Netflix recommendations, Siri, and even the face unlock of your phone. Machine learning helps devices get smarter by learning from data and predicting what we might like or need. And here's why machine learning is huge for your career. Right now, machine learning jobs are among the fastest growing roles worldwide. Companies in every industry, tech, healthcare, finance, and more are looking for people with machine learning skills to improve their products, automate tasks, and make smarter decisions. Machine learning engineers in the US earn around $112,000 on average, with plenty of room for growth as you gain experience. So if you want to jump into this exciting field, learning machine learning can open doors to high paying in-demand jobs. So in this video, I'll guide you through the ultimate roadmap to master machine learning in 2025, one step at a time. So let's get started. So in the first month, start with the foundations of programming. So programming is a language you'll use to communicate with your computer and bring machine learning algorithms to life. So this month is all about Python, the language of choice for most machine learning practitioners. So here's what to focus on. First, learn Python basics. Begin with Python's fundamentals like variables, data types, loops, and functions. So spend time writing small programs daily to get comfortable. After that, explore the key libraries like NumPy, Pandas, and Scikit-learn. So NumPy is for numerical operations. It makes handling large datasets faster and easier. And Pandas is to manipulate and analyze data. So Pandas allow you to filter, sort, and reshape data in a breeze. And then Scikit-learn is for implementing algorithms in just a few lines of code. So now you might have heard about R, another language used in machine learning. But don't stress about it now. Python will serve you well, especially as a beginner, because it's simpler and more flexible. So aim to spend an hour or two each day coding. By the end of this month, you'll have a solid base to build on. Now in the second month, get organized with version control and data structures. So this month is about learning how to organize and manage your code effectively and sharpening your problem-solving skills with data structures and algorithms. So first is version control with Git. So think of Git as your project history tracker. So imagine working on a big project and making changes, then realizing something went wrong. You want to go back to an earlier version, right? So that's where Git comes in. And here's what you should practice. Number one is committing changes. So save different versions of your work as you progress. And then branching, which means work on separate features without affecting your main code. And then comes merging which means combining changes from different versions once they are ready. So you have to set up an account on GitHub or GitLab to store your projects online. So not only will this be super useful, but it will also start building your portfolio. Now next is data structures and algorithm. So think of data structures like tools in a toolkit. So each one like arrays, stacks, queues, etc. serves a specific purpose. So here's how to approach them. Number one, arrays and lists. Now arrays and lists are for storing data in sequence. After that, you can get familiar with stacks and queues. So stacks and queues are for tasks that need ordered data access. And then you have sorting and searching algorithms. So these make your programs more efficient. And that's super important in machine learning where data can get massive. So the goal here is to build up your problem solving skills, which are key to machine learning success. So take it slow, practice daily, and you'll see progress. Now in the third month, learn to access data with SQL. So in machine learning, a lot of work involves accessing and organizing data from databases. So SQL, a structured query language, is your ticket to getting the data you need for training ML models. So here's what you should focus on. Select and where. So these commands help you pull specific pieces of data. And then you can move on to joins. Joins usually combine data from different tables. So this is so powerful that you'll use it all the time. And then comes group by and aggregate functions. They are great for summarizing data to find patterns. So spend time working with sample databases you can find online and practice writing queries. Being comfortable with SQL will save you time when preparing data for your models. Now, after completing the third month, you can move on to mathematics, which is building your analytical mind. So this month, we are tackling the math behind machine learning. So don't worry, you don't need to be a math genius, but understanding certain concepts will make everything feel less mysterious. So in this month, you have to focus on linear algebra. So this is the math behind how models see data. 
So you can study vectors, matrices and operations like multiplication. Next comes calculus. So you'll use calculus to help your models learn. So you have to focus on derivatives and gradients which help minimize errors in your model. And then you can move on to probability and statistics. So understanding probability helps you make sense of data. So learn about distributions like normal distribution, binormal distribution, and then variance and standard deviation. So once you have learned maths, next you'll be moving on to data handling and visualization, which is the heart of machine learning, as you all know. So with math under your belt, it's time to dig into data handling and visualization. So data preparation is vital because your model is only as good as the data you feed it. So number one comes data manipulation. So using pandas and numpy, you'll clean and organize your data. You might be removing missing values like clean up messy data so it doesn't confuse your model. And then you'll learn transforming variables like converting data into formats that work for models. And then you will move on to encoding categorical data like changing text data like female or male into numbers. So once you're done with data manipulation, next comes data visualization. So visualization is how you get to see your data before training a model. So here you have to learn Matplotlib and Seaborn. So you can create line charts, histograms, scatter plots, and heat maps. So this lets you explore patterns and spot outliers. So understanding these patterns in your data is crucial for building effective models. Now, in the sixth month, you will be moving on to the machine learning fundamentals. So now it's time to start building your own models. So you will focus on two main types of machine learning this month. Number one comes the supervised learning. So this is when you train a model on labeled data, where the outcome is already known. So you'll work with algorithms like linear regression, which predicts a continuous outcome. Then you'll work with decision trees, which breaks down decisions into a tree structure. And then you have support vector machines under supervised learning, which separates data into classes. Now, after supervised learning comes unsupervised learning, so here your model identifies patterns in data without labeled outcomes. So two popular techniques in unsupervised learning is number one, clustering, like K means clustering, which means group similar data points. And then you have dimensionality reduction. This reduces data complexity by focusing on key features. So you can use scikit-learn to try out these algorithms on sample data sets. So this will give you hands-on experience with model training and you will learn to fine tune them to get better results. Now, before moving on, if you are interested in advancing your career in the field of AI and machine learning, SimpliLearn's postgraduate program delivered in collaboration with Purdue University and IBM is a perfect opportunity. This highly ranked program offers a comprehensive curriculum covering essential topics like machine learning, deep learning, NLP, computer vision, reinforcement learning, generative AI, prompt engineering, and many more. With hands-on experience through 25 plus projects, and access to 20 plus cutting edge tools, you will gain the skills needed to excel in today's competitive job market. So join now and elevate your expertise with the backing of Purdue's academic excellence and IBM's industry leading insights. You can find the course link in the description box and pinned comments. Now moving on to the seventh month, you'll be building and training models with advanced libraries. So by now you've experimented with some basic models. So let's step it up with advanced tools like TensorFlow and PyTorch. So these libraries offer more flexibility and power. So TensorFlow and PyTorch, so here you can start with simple models and work your way up. So these libraries allow for building neural networks, which you will be studying more on the next month. Now, once you have become familiar with TensorFlow and PyTorch, you can move on to model training and evaluation. So you have to learn to split data into training and testing sets and evaluate models using metrics like accuracy and precision. So your goal this month should be to get comfortable with these libraries and understand how they handle data and model training behind the scenes. So once you are done with this, you'll be moving on to the eighth month where you'll be dealing with advanced machine learning. So this month's concept will be number one on ensemble learning, which means combining multiple models to get better predictions. So here you'll be learning about bagging. For example, random forests. Here multiple decision trees make predictions. And then you have boosting like Adaboost, XGBoost. So models learn from each other's mistakes over here. And after ensemble learning comes deep learning. So here you explore neural networks which mimic the human brain. So you'll learn about neural network basics. So you can start with simple fully connected networks and then you can move on to back propagation and gradient descent. So these helps your model learn and improve. So you can use TensorFlow or PyTorch to practice building neural networks. So you can work on projects to reinforce these concepts. Now moving on, you have to specialize on topics like NLP and computer vision. 
So machine learning applications are so powerful and here you will get a taste of two major fields which is NLP or natural language processing. So here they work with text data for tasks like sentiment analysis and text classification. So you can start with basic pre-processing like tokenization, stop word removal and move to building simple NLP models. After that you can try out computer vision. So for image data you have to learn CNNs, convolutional neural networks. So these networks analyze visual patterns making them ideal for image classification. So you practice with open data sets like text documents or images and apply the concepts you will learn to see results in real world applications. Now in the 10th month, you'll be dealing with model deployment, which is bringing your models to life. So here you'll be using Flask or Django. So you can use these frameworks to create a web API so users can interact with your model. For example, build a web app that lets people upload images for classification. And then you can also try out Docker. So package your model and its dependencies so it can run on any machine. So this is super helpful for deploying models without compatibility issues. So by the end of this month, you'll be able to share your models with the world. So moving on to the 11th month, you'll be starting with cloud and production. So this month, you'll learn how to deploy models on the cloud and ensure they perform well in real world environments. So you'll be dealing with cloud platforms like AWS, Google Cloud or Azure. So you have to learn to deploy models on the cloud for wider accessibility and scalability. And then comes monitoring and maintenance. So understand how to track your model's performance over time and update it as needed. So these skills are essential for maintaining models in production and ensuring they stay reliable. And finally, you will be creating real world projects and portfolio building. So here you have to choose topics that interest you and showcase your skills. So first you can start with full projects. So complete projects that go from data cleaning and model building to deployment. So ideas could be a sentiment analysis tool or an image recognition app. And then you have to build your portfolio. So organize and document your projects, host them on GitHub and create an online portfolio to share with potential employers or collaborators. So by following this roadmap, you'll be well prepared to handle real world machine learning challenges and have an impressive portfolio to show for it. So thank you so much for joining me on this ultimate roadmap to mastering machine learning in 2025. I hope this month by month guide gives you a clear, achievable path to dive into machine learning from the basics to deploying your own models. Remember, learning machine learning is a journey. There will be challenges along the way, but with patience and consistent practice, you'll see progress step by step. So if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay updated on more content just like this. Thanks for watching. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.